The third step of the root method is to solve the four corners on top, and you do this once you've built both blocks on the left and the right. Uh, the most basic way to do this is to use two algorithms and repeat them over and over again until the corners are solved. Uh, that's not very fast, so once you learn that, you're going to want to move on to something called two-look CMLL. Uh, what that is, is a method where you solve the corners in two steps. The first step is orienting them, so twisting them to get yellow on top. So you use this, you do this using one of seven algorithms, so like that, and now they're all yellow. And then what you want to do uh, the second step, or the second part of two-look CMLL, is permuting them, so putting them in the right spot. Uh, there are only two of these cases, so this one you switch these two, you do an algorithm, and there, they're solved. Uh, this is pretty good, it's the intermediate version of CMLL. It's only nine algorithms, so it's pretty easy to learn. Uh, there's a link in the description to a website where you can learn it, but... Once you feel comfortable with it, you're going to want to move on and start learning full CMLL, which is 42 algorithms. Uh, you can start whenever you want, but I recommend starting at around 30 seconds. When you start learning full CMLL, you might find it hard to memorize algorithms quickly at first. And there are quite a few different ways to get faster at learning algorithms. The obvious one is to just learn more so then you get more efficient at it. But also there are a few other tricks like splitting up algorithms into different parts or uh, training it into your muscle memory. So I'll link a dis uh, video in the description by Chris Olson on how to learn algorithms faster. So when you're actually learning the algorithms, you, have, you want to make sure that you learn the fastest algorithms you can find the first time around, so you don't have to waste time learning new algorithms. Uh, so like for when I learned CMLL, I averaged like 20, 25 or something. 25 seconds and then I was really lazy so I learned whichever algs were the easiest to learn but that wasn't the best way to go about it it would have been better to learn the fast algs because when I averaged about nine seconds I had to spend a couple months finding the better algorithms and switching to them and like one that comes to mind is this case it's a bow tie case I recognize it by these two are opposite and these two are opposite I used to do a really weird alg like something like this which is pretty slow, but then like, I think like yesterday or something, I found this algorithm, which is just RU2, R2, uh, sledgehammer, and then RU2, R prime. <clears throat> That's really fast, so you have to, you want to make sure you learn good algorithms from the beginning. Um, there's a link to my CMLLs in my, in the description, and also a few other, uh, resources for learning CMLL algorithms. So you want to first look at what fast people use, so... Uh, like me, I don't think Kevin has a CMLL page, but also TDM, he averages like, I don't know, 13 with Rue, and he knows a lot of algs and stuff. Also other resources like Wafo, AlgDB, just uh, find as many algs as you can and find what suits you best, uh, but make sure to look at mine first because I think mine are really fast, and yeah. Once you've learned all the algorithms for full CMLL, you want to make sure you can actually execute them fast in solves. So the ones I use that are on my page are all can all be done sub one. I have a video on me executing every single one of them in under a second. Uh, but they, you can only do them sub one if you have good finger tricks for them and you practice. So uh, you get you get practice from uh, just doing solves. So you because you do the algorithms in solves, that, that's, what you, that's what you use to solve the corners. But also you can do separate practice, you can drill algs that are slow for, I don't know, five minutes before you start a session. Uh, but the main thing, in my opinion, is learning good finger tricks for algs. So for this, you want to have really versatile way, uh, what am I saying? You want to have a lot of different ways to do the same move. So for F prime, you have to be able to do this, uh, like this. Uh, U, like that, like this, and then D prime is very important, you want to be able to do it like this, and like that, but this one's, I think, more useful. Uh, so a good example of a sort of, I guess, complicated finger trick, or one that people do uh, with a lot of regrips, and I think you can do it easy, uh, in an easier way, is this one. It's a U case, these two are, these two match, these two match, and like, there's like opposites, so it's like a checkerboard thing. The algorithm goes like this. 
Uh, so it's r prime f u prime r f r prime u r f prime. Uh, if you don't use this f prime finger trick for that last move, then it's gonna be really awkward. You're gonna have to do like or something weird. Uh, another way to do it would be and then switch to this grip here. So then, if you do the F moves like D moves with your right hand, uh, it'll be a lot faster. But once you have learned full CMLL and are comfortable with it, so maybe like sub-15, sub-12, something like that, uh, you want to start learning multiple algorithms for the same case to avoid this. This is the 6 flip, it's the most annoying edge orientation case. Uh, most people solve it like this, with an algorithm, R U prime, R prime, U prime m prime u i don't like that but there are other ways to do it like misoriented centers that's going to be a video coming up so in order to avoid this case what you want to do is learn an algorithm that preserves edge orientation and an algorithm that flips edges so i'll just do an example maybe a soon or whatever uh okay whatever anti soon so uh i didn't do a six flip whatever okay there six flip uh, so if you just did a regular anti-soon here, you'd get a 6-flip, which is bad. But if you know an alternate algorithm, which in this case is very similar, it's just a fat anti-soon, you do that, and then you don't get a 6-flip, you get a nice case. So, uh, my website, my website, I don't have a website, my document with my algs has two for each case, well, almost every case, uh, two for most of them, so that's for avoiding bad cases or getting skips. So like, you know, if, if you have all of them oriented, why would you flip edges? You just do an algorithm to keep orientation. Right, so to finish off this video, I thought I'd just do an example of me doing last slot. So the last pair of the second block and then solving CMLL. So right here, I have the first block solved and the square solved. And I have this pair, so I'd insert it with R prime U and then I'd do R wide to get yellow on top, and then uh, from here, I see I have a U case because there are two here and two here, and I see these are opposite, and this is, like, matches one of these, doesn't really matter which one it is. So then these two have to match, and I know they're orange now because I can see orange right here. So then I do U, and then I already have an arrow, I have three here, three here, so I'll do the algorithm that preserves edge orientation, so I still have this case right after. And I do it like this, it's just an anti-soon and then a soon. I execute it like this. So yeah.